finals. Two more snooker stars, though, ready to compete in the tournament. They last met in the quarterfinals of the Champion of Champions competition, a tremendous tie in the making. So let's get them to the table up first. Please welcome 12-time ranking event champion, it's the magician, Sean Murphy. And his opponent has already won four titles this season. Please welcome the ace in the pack, Judd Trump. One of the most attractive matchups in the modern game. Judd Trump and Sean Murphy, they love to attack. Let battle commence. It's our third quarter final at the Riyadh season, World Masters of Snooker. It's already been a momentous day, an extraordinary match to kick off proceedings earlier with Mark Allen somehow denying Mark Selby on the final black. Doubling match ball from 3 1 behind. Then we saw frame. Luca Brassell come through against Ali Carter just now by Judd four Trump. frames to one. And now it's Trump against Murphy for the right to play either Higgins or O'Sullivan in the semi-finals tomorrow. Best of seven frames, of course. This is their 23rd meeting. It's actually the third time they've done battle this season. And in the previous two meetings this campaign, it's been Murphy who's come out on top. 2023 World Grand Prix, 6-2 in the semis. And as mentioned by our MC, the champion of champions quarterfinals 6-4 so Murphy buying a bit of revenge and two players Neil have had pretty contrasting seasons actually yes Murphy won the champ the championship league at the start of the season but since then not much doing for him Trump on the other hand back to being a serial winner again yeah I mean Judd Trump is almost back to being that prolific winner that he was just pre-COVID in those two seasons where he won so many events I'll say one thing though, I, I, I'm not I'm certain of the fact that Sean Murphy at some point will get his winning back together. I think uh, you know the old uh, form is temporary class is permanent. You know, we, the fact that he's done very little since that championship league makes me feel that at some point between now and the end of the world championships he will go deep in something. I, I think that's sure to to happen. Could be this week. Here in Riyadh. But either way, I'm, I'm certain it'll happen. Maybe the fact that he could go into the championship with uh, not much winning form might be a reason why he might go deep. He'd be fresh for it. And as far as this week is, is concerned, this could be where his fortunes change. He's good enough. He's classy player enough, isn't he? Without a doubt. And of course, last season, it was a big return to form for Murphy, winning two big titles. The Players Championship and the Tour Championship. Mistake from Trump. Quite a serious mistake. He's gone absolutely nowhere. As mentioned, the season couldn't have started any better for Murphy. He won the ranking championship league without losing a match, beat Mark Williams for that title to claim his 12th ranking crown. But since then, he's lost his first match in six ranking events. Nothing better than the round of 16. So due a run in a big tournament, and he'd love one to regain the form of last season here in Riyadh. Although 
overall it's been a disappointing season to this point. He has had a couple of highlights, not least that amazing maximum break that he made in the shootout, which was incredible, really. Obviously a tournament that involves time constraints, but it didn't affect Murphy. He brought the house down with that break. Five. Yeah, and I've always said this about Sean Murphy, even when he's not winning matches and getting results, nothing seems to be wrong with his game. You know, he always looks terrific at the table, wonderful ball striker. He appears to exude confidence. Just sometimes he just doesn't win. It's as simple as that. He, other players, Ten. you kind of see when they're out of form, out of sorts from their body language and their ball striking isn't up to what it often is. You don't really ever see anything wrong with Murphy's 11. game. Just occasionally, it just doesn't quite happen for him. And he looks fine even here in these few shots. Lucky fancies the job tonight. You're right. There's something just very aesthetically pleasing about the way Murphy strikes the cue ball. That lovely pause on the backswing. Lovely rhythmical Seven. cue action that he's got that even when he is struggling for results, he's good to watch. Last season, he was back to his very best. Of course, he wasn't Eight. able to defend his Players' Championship title because he didn't have sufficient ranking points to qualify for that event for the top 16 on the one-year list. He's down at 26, which is a measure of the fact that he's had some disappointingly early exits in the ranking events, but... As he said himself, ahead of this match, in that little interview he gave, maybe saving it all up for the Crucible, but in the meantime, he'd love to get back into the winner's enclosure with a title like this. 26. Yes, of course, he went on to win the Tour Championship afterwards. He currently isn't in that. <coughs> only the World Open as a means to getting into it by a very deep run. Their 23rd meeting in all. And they've met 33. on the biggest stages, multiple meetings at the World Championship. In fact, Murphy has beaten Trump in all three Triple Crown events. 34. Trump leads the overall head-to-head, -head, however, by 13 to 9, including those two wins this season. But this looks like a golden chance for Murphy to take the opening frame after Trump's mistake. 41. I don't think you hear him, Sean Murphy, win or lose tonight. 49. Saying anything about waiting a long time for his match. I just don't think, I think that's just one of the ways Fifth. roll on, roll off, snooker go. Tennis, it's the same, isn't it? At Grand Slam events, you don't know what your time you're going on. You don't know how long are you waiting for a three-setter if you're a male player, or as much as a five-setter. The difference in time could be huge. It's just one of those, one of those things. It's not perfect, but uh, it's a kind of business. And you can't play your match till the other one's finished. So I don't think Murphy will putting Brown. up that argument. Brown. As we've heard a little bit of this afternoon. Oh. It's a very good start. He's not over the line, but and I think we've learnt this week, if we didn't already know it, that until 62. he won the frame and the opponent needs multiple snookers, it's not over. It dropped. It was just, I suppose it was the right pace. Played gently. And that black frame ball. A red to make sure. So a great start for Murphy. Trump 70. making the mistake of leaving Murphy in for this opportunity and he's snapped it up. 71. Playing on the pink here because he can shift the three reds out a little in doing so. 
think he might be on the red, just slightly below and to the left of the pink. 77. Murphy in eighth spot in the all-time list of century breakmakers in professional snooker with 648, 24 of which have been made this season. And again, Black just about finding the pocket and he caught the jaw some way away from it. 86. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to make the century, well, you won't need to move that right hand ready. I mean, he's got the perfect shot to play, knock it out here. But I suspect because the century will be made before the red's come into play. So sensibly, he's not trying to get it out. He will do after this next black, though, I think. Either that or play the double. 94. Yeah, he's certainly playing to head the keyboard towards the red now. Acknowledging the crowd. Well, that might be the biggest cheer we've had so far this week. And certainly this audience have been engrossed by the action they've seen today. A remarkable match between Selby and Allen. What about this for sure? <laughs> he is a showman, Sean Murphy. In fact, he's described himself more than once as a show-off. He loves to entertain, and I think this is the kind of stage which is made for him. He'll very much relish the opportunity to put on a show if he can, and he started the evening in fine fashion. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen four houses in the matches all day yesterday and this afternoon, but there's a good few in tonight. The, uh, the match is very attractive. Of course, the O'Sullivan factor. He's playing later, by the way, against Johnny Gates. Well, the match, that should be... But in the meantime, this is more than a, an appetizer for that. A very attractive game of snooker. And what a start from Sean Murphy. 150. He's taken these quite beautifully, hasn't he? Just a reminder of the class of Murphy. It's been a bit hit and miss for him for most of this season. But as Neil mentioned, form may be temporary, but class is permanent. And Murphy's always had bags of it. Only the second qualifier after the great Terry Griffiths to win the World Championship. Way back in 2005, he's been in a few finals since then. But what a start to the evening, what a break from Sean Murphy. There was some magic there from the man they call the magician. A 1-2-6 to open up quarter-final number three here at the Riyadh season. World Masters of Snooker. Great match in the offing. Murphy 1 0 up. And they've already been royally entertained in the Kingdom. Thank you, the second frame. On quarter finals day. Sean Murphy to win. This always promised to be a very attractive match, and it certainly started that way. Murphy breaking off in frame two. Four required for a place in the semi finals tomorrow. The final, of course, to follow the semis tomorrow evening over the best of nine frames for the title and a quarter of a million pounds to the winner. Murphy. And the in off, not good for Trump because he's brought that red that he attempted back up the table. He's had an amazing season apart from the four titles he's won, of course, three of them back to back. He's been in three other finals, Trump, so his consistency once again has been off the scale by his standards. Quite a quiet season last season, albeit that he did win his second Masters. He's played up on the black here, interestingly. Oh. But honestly, he didn't have to. He didn't have to play on the black there. Could easily play on lower value colour. You can guess why that is, of course, but we'll not get too carried away with the red and the black being taken. 
I think he's the, the biggest problem he's had this season, Sean Murphy, just looking Eight. at his results, has confirmed what I thought. He's not played well against players ranked below him. He's lost to quite a few players. He would have been expected to no. beat. Of course, against a, another leading player, you, you just feel that he'll go into it with maybe a different mindset. And we'll just see how tonight goes at the moment. The man he's playing has not settled at all, Judd Trump. He's barely played a good shot in the few he's had. The point you make is borne out by one of Murphy's performances of the season. Probably the performance, actually, when he whitewashed John Higgins at the World Grand Prix and Higgins barely had a shot. Murphy was unplayable that night. <laughs> now then, now then. Oh, hang on. He hasn't snooked himself on the black as he with the red because that was a terrific shot. But where's the red ended up? He's unlucky. There's no doubt. And of course, any hopes of a dart at the super maximum have been quashed there. You never know where all the reds are going to go on those shots. You hope they won't get in the way, but this time that's exactly what's happened. Well, you heard what he said at the start of every frame. All of the players involved here this week in Riyadh will have one thing on their mind, that golden ball and the prize that comes with it, nigh on £400,000 if someone ball. can make a maximum, and then pot the extra ball. And Murphy, you never know, could have been in with a shout there had he landed on the black. But now, turning his attentions to his next shot with that opportunity lost. And that's not a bad way to keep the break going, is it? Murphy looks in the mood this evening. Great shot. The golden ball is whipped off the table by Jan Verhaas because he's not... plays no further, further part in this frame. Yes, he's a... exceptional star. Murphy's... Looking to relish this occasion, I think he is. He's catching Joe Trump cold here. And you've got to make hay while you can in a situation like this against such a great player. He's very capable of playing what we might call it lights out snooker, Murphy, where you think he looks the best. Thinks it's sliced bread out there, you know, but uh, it's not so easy a game that you can perform like that all the time. Twenty-four. But he's got another golden chance here, hasn't he? I mean, it was the in-off to a pretty wayward shot from Trump, which allowed all this to happen. One of the few disappointments for Murphy last season was bowing out in round one at the Crucible, but of course, 29. that result, losing a decider to Si Jiawe, was put into more accurate context by what Si went on to do, very nearly making the final. Losing in the end to that momentous and record-breaking fight back from Luca Brussel, one of our semi-finalists, of course, having beaten Ali Carter earlier. It was a fantastic match, which went the distance as mentioned. But this is the kind of snooker, 37. and yes, it is early days in this match, that we saw a lot from Murphy last season. 38. Just making the game look so easy, so smooth around the table. That swagger that he's always had when he's playing well. Yeah, I mean, it is early days, but of course, he might just be about to go halfway to winning the match. He's only best of sevens. Not 2 0 up yet, but he's on, the, on his way, it seems. This is 51. where the game 
can be such a challenge for the player who's forced to watch from their chair, powerless to do anything. Chad Trump has yet to score a point in this match and it's beginning to look unlikely he'll score one of any meaning in this particular frame. But you've got to remain focused, remain ready in case a chance does come. Easier 69. said than done. So, Miss Pink, barring a snooker, for 2 0. Yeah, he's absolutely raced into a 2 0 lead. Match feels like it's only just started. 66. This one will absolutely cement a couple of frame advantage already. 67. Trump with it. Barely any table time. And it's in Sean Murphy's interest to keep it out there by basically putting all the balls on his own. 74. And there would be an argument if he were to break down that Trump might just play a few shots. But it's 204 points without reply. 75. Not a ball potted by the ace in the pack. So all you can do is sit and hope it will change soon. Okay. Another good shot. Nudging the red towards the left middle. 82. He might even be able to move the other red out here on the right. Can't beat the top break in the tournament so far. That was uh, a 1-3-8 by Ding Xiongui against Ali Carter. But what a start this is from Murphy. It's... Immaculate snooker. And the Mate. crowd are loving it. Yeah, he's so Mate deep in thought, isn't he, Judd Trump? He's done very little but sit there so far in this match. Safety error in the first frame and then going in off an attempted long red in the second, bringing that red back up the table because he missed it by quite a distance. And this is the result. 95. Surely it's going to be back-to-back -back centuries for Murphy. 96. They're thoroughly enjoying this, and why wouldn't they? This is as good as it gets. One hundred and three. You're right. You just can't play any better than this. You know, you just can't see anything better. Sweet, queuing, attacking, confident. One hundred and six. And seemingly enjoying it, getting a good ovation from the. Audience, which is acknowledging when he's passing three figures. 110. Marvellous stuff, quite honestly. 15. He plays with a certain panache, doesn't he, Murphy, which is unique to him, really. He is a lovely player to watch when he's queuing like this. 121. 126 in the first frame. 121 in the second. A 650th career century for Sean Murphy. The former world champion is playing quite magnificently. And at the moment, Judd Trump is powerless to do anything about it. He's yet to pot a ball or score a point. And Murphy is halfway to the semi-finals. An incredible start to our third quarter final here at the 2024 Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker. Sean Murphy with a 1 2 6 break in the opening frame live here in Boulevard City in Riyadh. And then a 1 2 1 to follow up. Chad Trump has only had a couple of shots in this match. He spent the rest of the evening in his chair. And the crowd have been thoroughly enjoying the quality of Murphy's snooker. So, Trump.
who, as we know, is well capable of doing likewise. Looking now to try and get involved in frame three. Short match, as Neil mentioned, it's a race to four, so this is a big frame now for Trump. He knows that Murphy's queuing beautifully. <coughs> yeah, I mean, we've seen good snooker, haven't we, already in this first two days of this three-day tournament here. But at the moment, Judd Trump has walked into one, isn't he? And another terrific word. Is Murphy going to play this black? I mean, the keyboard's gone a long way down the table. <clears throat> he's tempted, isn't he? But <laughs> he's a very tough shot. I and mean, he's got this match kind of going the way he wants it to right now so does he really want to take this on he knows there's risk involved does he want to let you know, Trump back into it and as we've seen already today momentum can sport Yellow. Mark Selby 3-1 up in to win against Mark Allen Mr. when he was a few pots away from a comfortable victory and ended up losing on the final black in the most extraordinary circumstances as the Golden ball once again gets removed. So Murphy will be keen to keep his foot on the pedal here and also acutely aware that Trump is more than capable of hitting back with something similar if he gets the chance. Trump coming into this tournament as he comes into most these days, full of confidence after what he's achieved already this season. 22 consecutive victories at one stage for Trump during this campaign. That is some going. And only the fifth player in the history of the game to win three ranking event titles in a row. Interesting that Murphy imparted that first long red, didn't take that black on. He must have been tempted, but he has to play the match situation. And right now, he doesn't want to give Judd Trump an easy in. He thought the black was too difficult, so I think he has done the right thing. It has to be a positive shot, not a negative one that he's played. He's just trying to keep his opponent out completely. But this time, he can't do it. Terrific shot from Trump. some way to open your account after you've been frozen out completely for two frames but as mentioned Trump more than capable of matching Murphy's heroics well, he's finished a bit short of pace here and when the two reds go he wanted the cue ball about well a good way up the table further than he's managed really want that Ten. second red going in because it'd be nice to think you could keep it for later in the break if it's over the pocket but it's gone in the pocket instead <sighs> 17 
24. Twenty-five. Well, Keir so is drifting a little bit closer to the left cushion than he would have wanted there. Shot that you know because he, I think he knew he was heading towards the blue and just nudging it forward a touch. <coughs> no harm. So if Judd could come back with a frame winning break from a single visit on the back of two of those from his opponent, that would be quite something here. I'm not surprised take the yellow because now he's very tight on the cushion. This is there. Not where he wanted to be. He's got to push through the bunch. Thirty-three. He's got to use a bit of force, not loads, but enough to take into doubt your accuracy. It should be a good shot if he pops this and gets through onto a, the black. He's done well, but he's not on the black perfectly by any means. Trump really wrestling to try and get control of the cue ball again, which has 41. been absent for the last few shots in this break. But he is so good at keeping breaks going when it feels as though it might be coming to an end. Yeah, but he can't do it this time. You're absolutely right. He's very good at Trump, it. Trump. I think he knows that he has to win this frame. And he does want to let Murphy and he's seen what Murphy's form is like it's very good handy lead with some awkward reds Murphy about to move one of them get through to those reds on the left but he can play the red below the pink as a shot to nothing cue ball heading down the table another terrific pop yeah i think he's okay there with the green just below its spot he actually landed it quite well on the, the green this table has played like lightning hasn't it from the start of this event, very slick conditions. Green. Green ball. So Murphy back in. Thirty six adrift. Four. very good as well because he's on the pink to middle he's developed one of the safer reds
Fala. I certainly feel this is a really important visit because if you could also st take this frame, <coughs> given circumstances to the first two, well, you know, it's hard to think you would lose. Best of Nine. seven frames, because three nil up is not over, but this really was the frame that Judd got in first and might have won. I'm not so sure we will now. He, he might get back to the table, of course. It all depends on that left and red. Whether Murphy can get it into play. 25. 26. Yeah, I don't know what he played there. I think he might have tried to move the left and red. Either way, he wasn't close to that one. Might be able to drop this in and hold for the other end. It's a missable shot if you play it too gently. He's not missing. Thirty-one. This time, can he shift the other red? Moving a red off a red. He's not as common as doing so from a colour. 32. Well, that's... He's got the angle. It's perfect. Still got to execute the shot, but if you can hit the underside of this red and chip it towards the left middle. 34. Exactly what he tried. Didn't get enough of the red, clearly. 38. That can and gone to plan. Every chance Murphy would have stolen the frame to go three up with four to play as it is. It's still up for grabs. A vital frame, particularly for Judd Trump. He's going to have a lot to do if he loses it. The winner, of course, to play the winner of the match coming up next. Our final quarter final, and what a match! to complete quarter-finals day here in Riyadh. Ronnie O'Sullivan, seven times world champion against the four times Crucible King, John Higgins. Well, that was a good comeback shot from Trump to lay the snooker on Murphy. Might have to go around the back here. significant one the uh, audience find their voice the Judd Trump fans anyway got to clear up one take this only a handful of points in front got the cannon wrong Murphy which is why he pushed the red on it's a good safety though from Trump to set up this frame winning chance, which you would certainly expect him to take from here. Needs up to the blue. Five. Frame to win. There was a something of a scare mid-frame when Murphy came back at him. And he's checked and he's just going to roll this in. He has to chalk up his first frame of the match. 19.
Murphy had the chance to promote the last awkward red of the side cushion, but only just made the thinnest of contacts with it. And that gave Trump the chance to get back into the frame, and he's gone on to clinch it to halve the deficit. So game on here in Riyadh. Sean Murphy's lead is halved. 2-1. Quarter-final number three here on the second day of the Riyadh season, World Masters of Snooker. Boulevard City, what a day it's been. We saw the most remarkable finale between Mark Allen and Mark Selby first up this afternoon. An epic battle which Allen won on the final black, doubling it in after Selby had led 3-1. Then we saw Luca Brussel, the world champion, come through at the expense of Ali Carter by four frames to one. And this match... Quarter-final number three, certainly living up to its billing so far. Sean Murphy out of the blocks, superbly with back-to-back -back centuries, but Judd Trump crucially has won frame three. So Murphy breaking off in the fourth, still needing two frames for a place in the semi-finals and a meeting with our final two quarter-finalists, whoever comes through the match between Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins, which follows right after this one. And that's not the best break-off from Murphy, an immediate chance for Judd Trump in his bid to level this match. And a chance to get on the black as well. One. Yes, he did have the chance to, but he didn't take it. He ignored it, really. I mean, he could have played it with less pace and got on the black. Golden ball is removed. Six. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Yeah, I think he came through a bit further than he wanted to there. He didn't want to be playing his next shot with his hand on the cushion rail. He wanted it on the bed of the table. It's more difficult from up there. Yeah, that was never in. It, it really did go in, but it was always 50. top jaw. And it was one of those shots where you're on a bit of a hiding to nothing. You're not really doing much with the cue ball or getting on a red. So sometimes you see those shots missed. There's not a lot happening on the shot, but he has left a red up to the, the green pocket, which he's got to play with the, the black over the pocket. There's value in, the, in this. Did well, unlucky. Very difficult pot that. Queuing down on the ball. Now, will Murphy take a risk here? Because he could try and pot this and open the bunch up. He's got the black over the pocket, which is staying there. So there's an argument he could play with pace into the bunch, split the reds all over the table. But he tried. Goodness, that is lucky. He didn't have a clue what's happening there with that double kiss. It's a terrific red to get in nonetheless. Sean Murphy holding his hand up in apology when he might have left the red into the center, but no problem for Trump drilling that one in. 
And into the pack, inevitably, he goes. Well, it wasn't a very big target, but he found the right through the gap in between the reds. Eight. It was the perfect connection. Now up to fifth in the all-time list of ranking event winners with 27 titles, four more, of course, this season. Nine. Now ahead of Mark Williams and behind the great Steve Davis by just one. Higgins, Hendry, and of course, at the top of the trio, Sullivan with 41. The only other players with more, but of course, 14. time is very much on Trump's side. He's still only 34 years of age. 15. If he maintains his hunger and his desire, he's got a tremendous work ethic, as we know. Works in tandem with his brother Jack, who travels around the world with him, keeps him on the straight and narrow, makes sure Thanks. that the practice sessions really count. The sky's the limit for Trump. 20. I guess one area where he'll feel that perhaps given his extraordinary talent, he has underachieved a little so far as in the Triple Crown tournaments with just quote unquote four, but once again, he's got time to add plenty more. And he'll certainly go 25. to the Crucible as one of the big favorites given the season he's had. Whatever happens here. Yeah, he's getting his way back into the match as well because as you say, Murphy thought he'd got out. It looked like he had, but he zipped a red into that right corner. And now, with a few shots, the reds were spread. The frames are being rattled through. 33. They haven't been playing that long. It's a very open game. 34. Still got things to address in this frame. But not a lot more to do. Forty-one. Forty-two. Didn't have to be top side of the blue because of the red up the table, but he would like to have been a bit straighter because now I don't think he can quite hold. He's got to hit a cushion to get back for a red. The shot he's very good at screwing through bolt like that and now this next red is frame ball 47 so the comeback is very much on 48. very good match high scoring free flowing <coughs> all the things we like yes i think it is one of the most anticipated matchups in the modern game when this pair collide we normally have Terrific matches. Trump edging the head to head 13 to 9, but Murphy has beaten Trump in the biggest tournaments himself. Just the way they play the game. They love to attack, they love to make the big breaks, great long potters. They've got all the attributes required for a really entertaining spectacle, and they're delivering again. Murphy started superbly. Trump didn't trouble the scorers in the first two frames. Murphy with back to back 60. centuries, including. 650th 61. of his career, of course, Trump. Well, he's closing in on a thousand. 68 already this season, with plenty of snooker still to come, of course. 68. The World Open in New Shan, the Tour Championship. All before the Crucible. 69. Came only the second player after Neil Robertson to make a century of centuries in a single season. Could he possibly do it again? Seventy-four. Seventy-five. Well, he's going to need a good shot here from yellow, from uh, black to yellow, I should say. Oh, Miss Q, what a shame. So no century, but 75 will do in double quick time from Judd Trump. And from a position of concern at 2-0 behind, having not potted a ball, 
in seemingly no time. He ties the match up and it's all to play for. It's a best of three now for a place in the semi-finals and a meeting with O'Sullivan or Higgins, two apiece. The great Ronnie O'Sullivan, seven times champion of the world, limbering up ahead of his bow in this event. Quarter-final number four here at the Riyadh season. World Masters of Snooker against John Higgins, no less a player who O'Sullivan rates above any other, I think, that he's ever played down the years. Tremendous respect between the two. And they will be doing battle at the conclusion of Murphy against Trump. And this match is very much back in the balance now. Trump, Trump recovering from 2-0 behind. The early blitz from Murphy with two centuries. So it's two apiece as Trump breaks off in frame five. Four, of course, the target place in tomorrow's semi-finals. With the final to follow in the evening. Best of nine for the title. And that first prize of £250,000. Yes, we've had four very easy-going frames, breaks, and all kinds. A couple of centuries from Murphy at the start. Should have been perhaps one in that last frame from Trump, but they've been one-sided frames. As I say, free-flowing, but you know, with so much up for grabs, now it's the best of three. It wouldn't be any surprise if maybe it wasn't quite so open and the pressure kicked in. I mean, the, the match earlier between the two marks, Allen and Selby. I mean, well, it's a, I mean, if you missed it it's, it, it's quite hard to describe how that match went, hard to think how exactly Mark Selby lost it. I'm not sure I know, but the last frame was, well, uh, there was so much happened in it. My advice is to go on Discovery Plus and watch it again, because it was uh, very, very eventful, ended up on the black. Alan won, 4-3. Elements of Kyron Wilson and Anthony McGill in the world semi-final in 2020 in terms of how much was going on in that final frame. High drama. I'm sure Mark Selby is still scratching his head wondering how on earth he didn't win it, but this match still very much in the balance. Yeah, this is not a very nice shot to have to play, is it? He's, he's in a situation where he can't get to that red. Golden table, so nothing's been potted yet. I mean, he, it's hard to think that he could play a, a different red and try and protect it by playing safe. Might have to swerve around the obstructing ball and try and hit the red near the pocket, hit it or pot it. Either way, shift it from where it is. Big swerve. <laughs> well, Murphy has given him every indication that he's going to try and stay on the black. In frames, and here's an opportunity to do just that. Drop this in, hold for the black. Goodness me, he really has gone to town on that shot. I think he did a hey, but one. absolutely ploughed the cue ball into the bunch. You need luck, and he, he's not badly placed on the back. He's not perfect, but he's giving him a shot. <coughs> it 
It's hard to think of anything quite more spectacular than the 147 he made at the shootout this season. Eight. But I guess if anything could eclipse that, it's making one here and then adding the golden ball for 167. He struck the back no. really well. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think he's got to try and get this frame one. I don't even know if the yellow goes past the brown, does it? Because realistically, can he make a 147? Point is, he's got a match to win here in a very lucrative tournament. 16. Guaranteed £75,000 for winning this match. I think he's done the right thing playing up on the ground. This uh, Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker event is well worth winning. And, you know, I think that any thoughts of a 147 plus with the golden ball would be. Uh, Highly dependent on everything being in the right pos position to do so. Doesn't want to give anything away, so he did right, I think. Jan Vass just grabbing hold of the 22. golden ball to remove it. That's not happening. Twenty-three. Has he still got that same fluency as he started the match with? Now that it's been pegged back to two all. Looks like it might just go to middle. <coughs> Tight, I'd say, but if he's right behind it, I think he would fancy potting it. Little nudge on the red. Tiny glance over it, and that's helped him. Thirty-one. Not bad. 38. There you go, both players playing at a very sprightly pace without appearing to rush, and that is a sign of class. Good cue ball control. 39. Not quite sure 39. what to compare it to over at shot ties, that final last weekend of the Players' Championship, Zhang Andu and Mark Keller were both around 30 seconds a shot. And I think at 31 at one point, so 44. a lot slower average shot times than these two tonight. 45. You think, well, does it really matter? Well, it kind of adds up after a while. Of course, it will always be quicker when it's an open match like this. But the intent here is evident on both sides. Terrific game of snooker we're watching. Chad Trump made the point 52. ahead of this match that it was important for the players to put on a show. Playing in a brand new location. 53. To showcase what the sport can offer. And we've certainly seen plenty of evidence of that already today. A very different match between Mark Selby and Mark Allen. But for drama, <coughs> well, you couldn't wish for any more. And this match has been played at tremendous pace superbly entertaining the two centuries from Murphy the comeback from Trump 61 and now Murphy on the cusp of retaking the lead in style here he's gonna need one more red after this black 68. yeah and making sure of that he very much played to the scoreboard there 68. Playing on that loose red, he didn't want to play an unnecessary nudge into the bunch, risk not being on something. Because as you say, frame ball. 
And I think you're right, the 69 mate. should be remembered by all players. Yes, it's sometimes you've just got to win matches. There's nothing more that you can do on some occasions, but it is an entertainment industry, and these two have gone out there trying to win and also entertain. And that's what will make snooker an even bigger global sport than it's appearing to be. So this is a really good performance from Murphy. We could make another century here. 75. It's gone a little far. He might be able to get on that left hand red from across on the right side of the table. Played into the what a shot that is instead. You get underneath that cue ball there. It wasn't an easy thing to execute. 82. Ah, what a shame. No third century. But another very fluent, very aesthetically pleasing contribution from Sean Murphy to get himself back in front and within one frame of the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker semi-finals. He leads Judd Trump by three frames to two. It's been a barrage of breaks in our third quarter final. 126, 121 and 82 just now from Sean Murphy, 75 from Judd Trump, but it's Murphy who leads 3-2 here at the Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker. A place in the semi-finals up for grabs. Murphy won away from making that happen to set up a showdown with either John Higgins or Ronnie O'Sullivan. They're up next. Of course, we already know that it's going to be Luca Brassell, the world champion against Mark Allen in the other semi-final after their respective victories over Ali Carter and Mark Selby. A very attacking safety shot once again from Trump opening the bunch. These two are not shy in doing that. I mean, that after two shots, that pack of reds has been almost obliterated. That's a very friendly place as well. I mean, look at that scattering of reds all around the center of the table. signs if you make a mistake especially in Judd's case the fact that he's three two down one away from losing good shot though <coughs> there's many frames like this where the ball's going all directions but all in the same third of the table if you like I think from a neutral's perspective, it would deserve a seventh and deciding. Of course, Sean Murphy doesn't want any of that. Well, this has probably got to go in, given the state of the table. It's long red. Not close. Not close. Well, it's out of his hands. Pretty brave shot to play at that pace, wasn't it? Felt like one he had to get. He's not. And now Murphy, who's just knocked in an 82, straight back in. Well, he's been absolutely deadly tonight, Murphy, but this is the frame that he wants to get the match won. So whether that will bring about any caution or tension, we say the last One. frame is the hardest to win. <coughs> See if that's true. Golden ball's going to be 
disappearing in the moment because it's playing low value colour. Yes, and there might be one or two doubts in Murphy's mind because it has been by and large an exasperating season after such a good start in winning the Championship League. He hasn't had much to shout about since then. Six times he's lost in his first match in ranking events. Wasn't able to defend his Players' Championship title. As Neil mentioned, he's got a lot of work to do if he's to have the chance to defend his Tour Championship with just the World Open to come as a qualifying event in Yushan later Three. this month. So confidence not necessarily high arriving here, but he certainly played confidently. It's now a question of finishing the job. Yes, I mean, the results have not been there, but his game looks to be absolutely there, doesn't it? And whatever happens over the next day and a half, you yeah, must be thinking that there's hope for the World Championships. Before that, the World Open, if he has a deep run to a championship, but he's out of that currently. Anyway, he's no. just gone a little awkwardly there. Finished in between about four or five reds that he could have played. It's not necessarily that easy queuing over the top of a couple of balls. But then it goes like all the rest. Ten. Really well played. Well, isn't it deceptive because from that overhead view, as good a view as it is, it didn't appear that red went. Sixth. Oops, if the other red was in the way. Getting the black on its spot, just getting onto these reds, which are slightly surgically placed but still all open. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Well, he's played quite beautifully tonight, Sean Murphy. I can't think that I've seen him play as well as this for a very long time. Chad Trump's been on the receiving end of it all. But just to finish the job, if he can win this frame of match at this one visit, he's basically won the match in four visits. It's taken him one in each frame, so that would be a very impressive display if he finishes the job. 44. It's not as though Trump has played poorly either. He played very well, in fact, to level from 2-0 behind to 2 each. But since then, Murphy's taken over once again, having dominated the first two frames without 45. allowing Trump a single pot with those two centuries. Could have had another one in the previous frame. Ended on 82, but all he cares about right now is getting to the point of no return for that man. 
He actually had an injured foot last week, Murphy, which uh, incapacitated him for a while. So clearly he's overcome that problem. He looks in fine fettle in all regards this evening. Just a case now of finishing the job. And he's got to be wary because obviously they're all there for Trump if he did get a chance for a counter. 52. So care required to make sure of the victory here. Yeah, just to glance up at the scoreboard, which is high up in the, in the sky here. In this arena. But he'll realise that he really is... Oh, very close to getting the match won, but not quite. Sean Murphy, 15. Not quite, he went. He'd have virtually played the perfect match here, had that gone in. But there's always a sort of a, a possible turnaround, isn't there, in these matches? There's no such thing as perfect snooker, it seems. We've had plenty of twists and turns already today. Is this another one? Oh, it could be. Because that... He looked for the world as if he was going to get that match one there. It's the first ball I can really think of he's missed in the whole match that's very significant. Barely missed anything. I mean, if there's anything good come out of it, the red that he just clipped into on the way through has put those three reds on the left corner of the table in, in a pretty unappealing place. They're very awkwardly set up now. This Six. plant looks horrible. So it might not be that significant. <coughs> Even though, had it gone in, they'd have probably been about to shake hands. Murphy would have won. And Trump knows that one more mistake and it could be his final shot of the tournament, so... Well, he's very good at making plants and that was a good one. It really was. That was a very difficult plant. And he knew he was going away from the table a bit. Of course, had it not gone in, it probably would have been a snooker. But he's laying a snooker anyway. He's just hanging on with a chance. I mean, as I say, those three reds on the left make it very difficult for Trump to clear. Murphy's not going to be going into them with any pace to move them that much. Just a, a glimmer for Trump that maybe wasn't there a few shots ago. The line was perfect, just, just under strength. He's got to be wary not to hit them too hard, of course, because he could then develop one for Trump. And Murphy doesn't have a safe colour by way of insurance. three is he possibly left a thin cut on the red just below the cue ball not that one but the other one wow this is a tough shot playing the thin cut to the left corner one. I think Murphy's a bit unlucky to leave that red on because those three reds are locked together just nudged it enough to make that shot possible it's developed everything this goes in, a new favourite for the frame. 
And yet another unexpected development on a day of surprises here in Riyadh. 40 points Seven. of difference, 51 left, but they're all there. Yeah, Trump. they really are. I mean, had the pink been missed, it was over, but as you say, Eight. it's been a very uh, unpredictable day. Well, it's been another wonderful match. It's been a great spectacle, and as Neil mentioned, in terms of this crowd, they would love to see a decider. And they 15. might well get their wish. Yeah, how does that affect things as the black go? I think it goes to the right corner. 16. And of course, now it's been respotted, the red will go when the black's put in the same place next time. Well, Murphy was within a, a shot or two, you feel, of having this match won. I think the red that he missed went. Maybe not in a complete pocket, but he was right behind it. I didn't think he was going to miss 24. that. I think it's a measure of the quality of this match that as brilliantly as Murphy's played and... 31. It's just about the only ball in live plays miss. It means that his lead has disappeared and it's down to a one-frame shootout. 30. That's how high quality this match has been. Murphy's done most of the scoring, yes, but Trump has more than played his part. So if he can now mop up these colours, we're going all the way. 36. A match that has absolutely lived up to billing. Fourteen. This is the red that cost Murphy, just shaving the other one on the way through to the pocket. And it looks like being very expensive. Forty-five. Well, it's a complete game changer, isn't it? That not going in. It's the first ball he'd missed in the match, which meant anything. He was, he's been brilliant in the frames he's won. 51. So, yet another black ball finish. And this to take us the distance. It's been a fabulous match. It really has. And we've still got one more frame to come. Judd Trump pulling... Frame six out of the bag when it looks as though Sean Murphy was on his way to a 4-2 victory. Murphy will have to do it all over again in the seventh and deciding frame here at the Rio season. World Masters of Snooker. Quarterfinal three still up for grabs. Fire a deciding frame. frame. Trump clearing up to win Trump. on the black for three each. Having won the previous two. World Grand Prix and the champion of champions. He leads the overall head-to-head -head 13 victories to nine. Murphy keen for some revenge this evening, but even though he's barely missed a ball in live play, that red aside just now, still a frame away from defeat. Despite one of the best performances of the season from him. And that's the standard that you would expect from a field this strong, of course. You're talking about the best 10 players in the world at the outset, plus the two wild cards. Every mistake magnified at this level. And just a reminder, we still have Messrs Higgins and O'Sullivan to come in our final quarterfinal. The winner of that to play, the winner of this tomorrow in the last four.
it really has been a terrific match. Trump has just been trying to hang on for the most part. And he's weathered the storm, but he's got himself to a level. Murphy's been quite brilliant, but he hasn't got a lead to show for it. We're into the decider. Played a good safety shot there, Sean Murphy, though. Not many ways back to bulk. shot at reds but he's playing twice across to hit the bottom ball here it's a very difficult shot he's, he's played this ever so well ever so well played that's one way to get out of that mess play as if you snookered that 23rd meeting this evening only the fifth deciding frame Murphy's most recent victory over Trump came courtesy of a decider at the UK Championship two years ago, 6-5. Very good, very probing safety shot once again. I don't think anything on the left side is gettable, reachable, hittable, nothing. It's just uh, Murphy's turn to play an important safety shot here, swinging the key ball, figure of eight star around the angles. It's another good shot. This is a very good exchange. It's not been a safety oriented match, but we've seen four or five really good safety shots here. And so often the last frame is a little different than the ones that have been played so far. That's good as well, so this is excellent. Just the kind of drama you get with a decider. Not a ball's been potted, but some very good shots. So where is the safety shot here? I mean, if there isn't one, I guess he could go for a long red into the left corner, but I mean, if you don't get it, you're leaving that man in. I'm trying to screw back to bulk here. Hope that nothing goes down the other end. A bit unlucky. A bit unlucky there. Judd Trub does win this decider. I think Murphy's entitled to feel a bit peeved because he's played so well. But that's the way this game goes sometimes. And it's Trump with the first opportunity to do some damage. Murphy with two centuries, further run of 82. He was in to win in the previous frame. About the only ball he's missed in live play. And is that one miss going to be Six. the difference between a place in the semi-finals and a trip home? Well, he landed in an area where he was always going to be on something. He's on a red to middle. And it could be a great chance, this. Seven. He's just been hanging on. For six frames, Trump. 
It's Murphy. actually outplayed by Sean Murphy. Now's his chance to go and win the match. 40. And of course, Trump is very used to winning this season. He's been a winning machine again. Four seven finals. Of course, he won a record-breaking six ranking time world championship 20. and there have been times many times during those runs to those tournament wins where he's not been at his best when at times he's been outplayed and he's had to find a way through nonetheless and that could be the case again 25. this evening he's played pretty well he's just come up against Sean Murphy in top form and yet here he is with the first crack at putting this match to sleep. Slightly awkward shot, this black's not on its spot, so it's a little different to the usual. I mean, how often do you lose a match with a 95% pot success? And that's total pot success. That's not live pot success, which is even higher for Murphy. 28. Well, Murphy tried a trick shot on the black in both frames one and two, which he missed. But for that, I think he'd have made total clearances. The other stat, not only Murphy completely outpointing Trump, is that Trump didn't put a ball in this match until frame three. Missed an academic ball on 82 for 3 2, when obviously the frame was one. So Murphy has, I think, missed one ball in live play, and that could be the ball that costs him. I think you're right. I think that's exactly what's happened. And. Uh, should he lose Murphy, he'll be encouraged with this form, but all the way home, if you're thinking about the, the red that he missed, not necessarily into the whole pocket, but enough of the pocket to make it a very likely pot. 37. But this is not over yet. He's still got to find a way back onto a red. The pressure is not all one way. We've seen enough snooker out of the ordinary today to know that you know another twist is possible. There is the twist, which is narrative of this quarter-final day here in Riyadh. Sean Murphy breathes again, and Trump left to rue that miss with the rest. I mean, he never looks as convincing with the rest of the other players, but he very rarely misses anything important. But he has the... He's left touching ball, so he's got away with it. He's not left anything on. Murphy just could get the cue ball in behind green, perhaps, if that... There's enough room behind it. So he's been offered a lifeline here. Surprising rest shot missed. <coughs> Unlucky, tried to. Hide that cue ball behind the green. Didn't want the cannon on the blue, obviously. But 
it's Murphy who's now in the same boat that Trump was in at the back end of the previous frame. He can't afford any mistakes from here. 41 behind. Delighted, I'm sure, still to be in the match. So can he find a good pot here and get himself back into this deciding frame? Couldn't have cued that any more sweetly. Beautiful for Murphy, right in the centre. Really good, and yes, the cue balls run a fraction further than he would have wanted, but at least the angle takes him into the three reds. I think this could still be a very nervy frame. They've all been open frames, but the deciders... Eight. It can be a very different story. I think it's been pushed awkwardly. It's red to left middle to keep the break alive. Nice. Nicely played. So clawing his way back into the frame, what he can do beyond that, we'll have to see. So, as I said, loads of breaks, open, attacking, flamboyant play. And snooker being snooker, this decider is likely to be a very different affair from here. So he's been playing 22. quite a big part in this frame. Early on, it's a really good exchange. I can't see another one yet. Not what Trump had in mind, but no great damage done. Yeah, there's been more safety in this frame, I think, than in the previous six put together. Yeah, that last shot of Trump's, you can always tell when it's gone wrong. He played thin off the red. Send the cue ball back, and when the red goes further up the table than the cue ball, you know it's gone wrong. But not necessarily cost. See what he played, just to just try and glance off a of red on the way Chuck back Thompson. up. Uh, I suspect he'll have another try at this. 
Maybe with a small adjustment, but of course, if he was to miss again the third go with the three, three strikes and out rule, he'd have to play a different shot. Yeah, Chad. Yeah. Is it possible to bring it up, please? Yeah, they're just trying to find out where it was on the before and after. Well, look. Okay. So, no, it's further up. It yeah. Yeah, it was further up as we're seeing that. So One more indicator. time, please. Yeah, that looks so good. Bang on. I'm just checking that. Round of applause and sings for the yeah. technology. Same shot, just trying to glance the red on the way back. Well, the third shot is not going to be the same. Oh, you miss. Chuck Trump for. Yeah, Murphy's been on the wrong end of a forfeit because of three consecutive misses when. The object ball has been available for ball. Happened to him against Mark Allen at the Masters once. So he'll be. <laughs> Sean, I've got to warn you. If you play foul and miss again, you'll lose the frame. Absolutely certain to avoid that fate here. It would be a horrible way to lose a match like this. There was the warning from Jan Bahas. He's got to hit one. He's got to play a different shot. Well, I know it's happened a lot over the years. I can't think that it ever happened in a, in a deciding frame in all the years. When that three strikes rule is applied, someone might be able to tell me differently. I mean, the care and attention go slightly out the window there. As it happens, it looks like he's not left anything. He had to play something involving hitting a ball. The mindset of snooker, eh? I mean, all that free flowing stuff, and all of a sudden we're into a decider, and it's a different ball game. Twenty-five thousand pounds alone. Remember, riding on this match, guaranteed seventy-five thousand for the winner. One hundred and twenty-five thousand if you can get to the final and double that if you win the tournament so there's an awful lot at stake for these players <laughs> 27 the difference Excellent shot from Trump, though, to get back in. Yeah, that's the black past the red. That yeah, very. I don't think it does go. I mean, it might just creep off the left jaw, but he would certainly not be playing it in favour, in preference to the pink. Every point like gold dust at this stage of a decider, Trump. With that very handy 34-point lead, had the chance initially, missed with the rest into this left corner to get Murphy back involved. But that excellent opening red, Eight. allowing him to just build his lead here in a bid to get over the line and into the semi-finals. 35 now, his advantage. Fifteen. Sixty. 
Well, it's going to be quite difficult to <laughs> just deliver the killer blow here. Another red required after this black. Yeah, can he get through? And leave himself a shot, albeit not an easy one. It's a shot for the match, 20. really. Maybe a pot, take the cue ball away from everything. If this rope were to go in, Murphy would need two four point snookers to tie. And it's yeah. there, clean as you like. Well, I can't imagine Sean Murphy has played much better than this in his entire career and lost. And that now looks likely. He's played some outstanding snooker. He's outscored Judd Trump throughout. But the serial winner that is Judd Trump seemingly has found a way once again to get 28. to the winning line. Fifty-five the difference, only forty-three left, so it's three snookers to tie now for Murphy. Yeah, and, uh, well, he's got to carry on, hasn't he? I have to say, he might feel quite unlucky to have lost this match if he does go on and lose, because he has played particularly well in it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Trump acknowledged that Murphy was actually Eight. for the lion's share of this match the better player, but it's all about getting to four in this format. And barring something surprising, even by today's standards, it's going to be Trump who achieves that at the expense of Sean, Sean Murphy. Murphy. Eight. 47 the difference, 35 Seven. left. Murphy still smiling but he's got to feel a bit exasperated given how well he's played one of his best performances of what has been a frustrating season in the main he'll certainly take heart from the way he's played tonight that is definitely a plus for him with the world championship looming large nevertheless a disappointing loss if indeed it is to be a defeat and that seems likely very briefly on the matter of uh, the three strikes rule happening in a decider. I've had a few people message me and tell me that it happened to Steve Davis against Ken Doherty in the final frame of the Irish Masters in 1992. So just to clear that up, thank you for the various people who messaged me on that score. A rare disappointment for Davis in that tournament. He won it virtually every time he entered, didn't he? Eight times he won it. Anyway, this has been a, a really good match. It's, if you followed it all the way through, you'll, I'm sure, agree that it is unfortunate that either player had to lose it, but it looked for all the world like it would be Trump because he's been playing catch-up all the way through. More the aggressor here. He missed one you know, important rest shot in this frame, which might have cost him. Really, this match is about one shot, and that is the Murphy miss. And he was looking to close the match out at 4 2. Albeit, you know, not necessarily sure to cost him, but Trump made a very steely clearance. earlier with Alan and Selby you're not completely putting this match to bed just yet oh. so two snookers now required
Didn't really want to push the black to the cushion. That doesn't help Murphy's cause. Yeah, I mean, of course, at this stage, Judd Trump inviting Sean Murphy to pot this whenever he wants to. Take out the expensive free ball on a red and a high value colour out of the equation. I would say, of course, and we have mentioned it a few times that the, the match with Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins, no less, follows this one. It's going to be a late night. It's certainly local time. 1.30 in the morning here. And still a match to play, and a classic, potentially. They've got quite a night to follow after the quality and the drama of the matches we've seen so far today, particularly the first quarter final between Allen and Selby, and then this match, the very highest caliber. A relatively straightforward win in the end for Luca Brussel over Ali Carter, 4 1. And of course, it's Mark Allen against Brussel in our confirmed semi final. Either O'Sullivan or Higgins against. Trump or Murphy, and Trump remains the firm favourite, even though Murphy's got one of the three snookers he needs to tie this frame. But as long as the red is on the table, there's hope for Murphy. Well, he tried to put it all his attention there into just getting the, the black into play, and I think that is that. <laughs> Terrific game. Murphy was superb. But Trump showed oh, tenacity, yeah. and he somehow won this. I'm not quite sure it looked possible at 2 0 down and not really in the match at all. He was like a steam train in full, full cry. Six to say that Judd Trump has the winning habit Eight. would be an understatement of significant proportions. Four titles this season, three of them in a row in ranking events, of course, seven finals, 11. and he's found a way to win again tonight, despite being second best for a lot of the match. Sean Murphy has been brilliant in defeat, but now Trump, with the match one, is turning it on for this crowd, and there isn't a safe ball on the table when he's in this mood. And we've still got the rocket against the wizard to come. A fabulous match. Sean Murphy played superbly in defeat. He made two centuries. He outscored his opponent, but Judd Trump has yet again found a way to win. And these two players have put on a real show for this crowd here in Riyadh. But it's Trump who has the last word. He's through to the semi-finals of the Riyadh season, World Masters of Snooker, and a showdown with either John Higgins or Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs>